Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the I'm Peaking Podcast. This is episode 18, and today with us, we have a very special guest. I've been listening to him since 2016 college. Wow. Please welcome Roman Silver, otherwise known. What's your real name? Vinny. 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 Yeah. Vinny. yeah. It's good there to meet you, go. man. Thank yeah, you for being on the podcast. Yes, thanks Thank for you coming. Guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, stoked to be here. Hell yeah. And I'm Devin. You're one of your hosts, and we also have here. I'm Nand. I'm Bryn. All righty. Can I out? Can, can I out you real fast, Devin? Yep. Yes, you I, can. I'm just gonna out Devin. So when we uh, <laughs> went to countdown 20, 20 to one, twenty twenty one, yeah. Um, his antsiness and anxiousness of like we have to get there for Roman Silver. We have to get there. <laughs> oh, for Roman it was Silver. crazy. I, I didn't even drive with them, and I was separate. Yeah. He was texting me. He was like, "Roman Silver, meet me at Roman Silver. Yeah. Like, we, yeah. you, you need to meet me here." And you I was were, like, you okay. were opening, right? You were like, he was uh, think, early, right? I he played second, I think. So it was still early. It was like five or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think so. Yeah, gotcha. five p.m. Yeah, yeah. It was four, four or five. Yeah, one of those, something like that. I know. I know. We were a little late, and like mm-hmm. one of the few times where he's like, "We're gonna run. We're gonna book it." And like, yeah. we literally. Oh yeah, I did run. I did. I ran. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the first time I ever uh, had pyro. Oh, yeah, I had the pyro. That was cool. I was like, yeah. But then, like, I was trying to get my manager to to press it during the right time. It was like <laughs> halfway through my set, I was like, "Where's the pyro?" And then, I, and then I turned back and I was like, "Hey, we're." You know, and then finally, like the next song, it was like, <laughs> he just does it a bunch of times yeah. the entire rest of the Don't set. Don't they like charge how many yeah. times? Like, it was you... like, yeah, it was like 800 bucks for the, the hour set. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Oh, but that, that's for the whole set. So you can yeah, do it the whole set, as long yeah. as, as many times as you want throughout the whole set. You get, well, no, it's, you have 120 seconds. Okay. I think that was what it was. It was like, mm. it was like uh, two minutes. Yeah. So you can press it as much as you want. So wow. that's yeah. so funny. I'm going to. I'm looking forward to the one set where somebody just yeah. I, know. <laughs> I guess you could probably you could probably pay more and and get the whole set. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. For a full two minutes though, like the 120 seconds you get, just yeah, it'll just, probably get so hot. Oh, People yeah. are like sweating in the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> no, the artist did it get hot? Oh it, yeah. I mean, well, every time it goes off, it's just like whoa. Step back. <laughs> yeah. Just like, are they yeah. still there? Are they still yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We used to do a video where like you bring marshmallows and then you just start yeah, shaking that marshmallows. Would be pretty funny, actually. marshmallows while like DJing yeah. <laughs> or like cooking food. <laughs> that would actually be that would be yeah. pretty funny. Or the da- you know the dancers on stage, they're like roasting the marshmallows over <laughs> the fire yeah. as they're dancing. They're yeah. just like <laughs> that would definitely go viral. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like the SpongeBob Campfire song is like playing in the background. Yeah. You know that song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People in the crowd are like videoing, like what the fuck yeah. is happening? <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. It's more like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's hot. It's, it's like menace activities hot. right there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, menace. Mm-hmm. Um, I did want to point out real quick too that uh, if you guys remember the episode we did back in, uh, it was around Christmas time where we gave a bunch of artist recommendations. Mr. Uh, Vinny here was one of them. So um, hopefully you've gotten a chance to check him out. But if you haven't by now, pause this video right now and go check him out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What type of music do you make? Like, what's your genre? That's always the hardest question. Yeah. You know, um, I don't really know. My The genre, it's just like funky, fun, danceable. My like, favorite. Yeah. I mean, I make a little bit of everything, you know. Um, I started out making house music and now, well, I kind of got into like bass music not like you know not like dubstep or anything but yeah. more like weird experimental stuff and then mm-hmm. um i just make a little bit of everything i just make what i like to make and what i'm listening to at the time and that's it you know so yeah i i definitely there's no real genre for it i think yeah. it's just kind of whatever i'm into at the time so Sick. yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's well, always chill vibey music for yeah. sure because we mm-hmm. always listen to you um post rave literally yeah. every single rave we go to post rave in the car on the way back vibing at the hotel yeah. or airbnb wherever it is we're saying it's just like the it's like the nice like mm-hmm. i'm not i'm not done like yeah. vibing yet mm-hmm. i just want to keep just keep vibing. vibing yeah like you and night goggles are like the first yeah. <laughs> like the first songs to come on at, in the car. <laughs> every time we After. talk about this all the time like can we just make the post rave playlist already and mm-hmm. yes, he just and hasn't made I it. I know. <laughs> we will. We, we yeah. That's will. a great idea for the Patreons, actually. I will, Post rave. Yeah, I will, I will share it. Yeah, go check out the Patreon. Yeah, if you have a time. Patreon, you, you should check it out. Let's check it out. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I was going to say on your experimental bass comment, uh, are, mm-hmm. do you mean like like your songs like uh, Fool 2022? Well, no, not like that. Like there's some stuff I've done in the past. I would say like uh, I did a song called Tempest. 
and then I did a song. Um, it, I did this Vince Staples remix back in the day called oh. Nine Millimeter. I just called it Nine Millimeter. It's it's really a Vince Staples remix. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and I have some other stuff. I mean, I, I'm definitely you know I know a lot of the, those people in that scene. I'm friends with a lot of them. I've done yeah. some shows with them as well. So yeah, I mean, um. Yeah, and I have a song like I have a few other songs like my song Mosaic and uh, mm, yeah, I think yeah. I've heard that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, definitely like weird and you know kind of experimental. I I still I still love that stuff. You yeah, know? yeah. Brent and I were is that the crunchy one? Yeah, that num num. <laughs> whenever he plays it, 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 it makes me feel like like someone's like chewing like like num 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 num. You're talking about the uh, you're talking about full twenty. The most recent. It's one. kind of like the mid tempo thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah. That one's but well, it's still very bassy. Yeah, which it's is very why, bassy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, that one was just for fun. I was just like, you know what, might as well. Yeah, that one it goes hard. Yeah, yeah. I said to her, and she was just like, she's like, I feel like I'm like chewing, to yeah. it, but like in a good way. Yeah, yeah, super aggressive. You know, I, I'll make, I still make some of that stuff. You know, some aggressive stuff, but the chill stuff is also fun. And and house music, I I make a lot of house music too. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I I know. Um, no place is a, a great. That's a yeah. That's, well, you consider that house, right? That's uh, yeah. House that's like yeah. That's definitely house. I mean for sure it's like uh yeah 125 yeah. bpm it's just like funky real fu real fun oh yeah, yeah. high energy yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i was gonna say i'm like because i i would say that um like who first if you had to pick an artist mm -hmm. um who would you compare your style like most to because i have my own thought on who that would be uh, okay. But I, I want to hear who who you have first. Well, I'm curious what you you. Why don't you go first? Because okay. I really want to know. That. All right, I would say uh, Lewis the Child. Okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would say like Lewis the Child, maybe a little bit of Odessa. Maybe, yeah, um, definitely that too. Yep. Do you know who Robo Talkie is? Yes, uh, I love Robo Talkie. Yeah, I would say like for sure him. You know, yeah. like yeah. I think our styles are very similar. So yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guys are all kind of like very, it's very in that like happy sounding, like very beat centric funky mm -hmm. vibe. Yeah, exactly. You know? But um, I know you, you went on tour with Lewis of the child, didn't you mm -hmm. at one point? Yeah. How was that? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I, I played a bunch of shows with them and the first time I played Red Rocks was with them. So that oh, was nice. crazy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Damn. Yeah. You played at Red Rocks. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. That was insane. That was last year. So shout out Lewis the child. They're, uh, they're, dope they've done a lot for me and yeah. yeah yeah funny story robbie uh was actually uh we're not, we weren't in the same frat but he's in the same like fraternity mm -hmm. uh he just went to usc and i went to uh U ucsd and okay. then when he came out he came out to play at a uh, sun god which is ucsd's uh festival that they have every year yeah and so our like chapter hit him up and uh we were like yo you should come through he, he didn't but Do like <laughs> no, but, but we talked to him yeah. after like what a depressing dang, end. i know <laughs> we got to hang out with him for a little bit we took a picture where we all do like the teak yeah. symbols so wait this is the teak symbol mm -hmm. yeah. that's scary why is it like illuminati it's it's a triangle Te teak's symbol is a triangle why is it illuminati i, I don't know <laughs> I guess we're Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I know. So, yeah. but that's cool. Yeah, I, I really I really dig that style, like that funky, like mm -hmm. beat-centric style. For sure, yeah. It's sick though that you, like, you just push out any music that you feel like resonates with you because a lot of artists feel like they have to stick to one genre for like the artist mm -hmm. project, whereas like yeah. you're just like pushing out yeah. anything that speaks to you. I mean, I feel like yeah. this this goes into what Grayson said to us. Our friend G-Zoom, he was on another episode. He, the whole like... Uh, don't strive for a genre strive for you yeah yeah like you. like mm -hmm. I, that's what i like too like every time i listen to roman silver i'm like i'm not i'm listening to future bass or i'm listening to how no i'm just listening to roman silver today yeah yeah that's the vibe yeah i mean i i like to think i'm like the epitome of <laughs> fuck genres you know because I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I think there's like there's like there's like, there's like <laughs> yeah. a lot of people who will say oh you know like i'll make whatever genre but like i think like I mean, I'll make like literally anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff I'm making right now isn't even like dance music at all too. So, yeah. and I think ultimately I would want to produce for other people in the future too. And like, yeah. you know, produce for some, some of my favorite musicians and, and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, I've been doing it, you know, making whatever since the beginning, you know, I start well, I kind of started off making house music and, and that's kind of how I got into it. And then 
you know, I just wanted to make a little bit of everything. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first song I ever heard from you was Yoko. Oh, damn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that a throwback? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually, so I dropped that song officially on Bitbird and then yeah. but I had dropped it before that though. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, that's yeah. when we found you and mm -hmm. I, I noticed that you had put it on your, uh, uh, like just a more as, recent on SoundCloud. album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I dropped it on SoundCloud just like, you know. Yeah. Like, do you yeah. mind if we actually play that? Cause I, I, <laughs> yeah, let's do I it. just think it's, yeah. Cause okay. like I've showed you the song before, but it's like, it's, it's still got like, it's so interesting just the way everything is. Yeah. Let's play it. I'm, I'm geeking just to have you on the podcast. To me, it's so. like one of those songs. I'm like, oh man, this is like old. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But, it, but even back then I remember like, cause um, that's the song that my college friends like showed me of yours. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, whoa, there's like so many layers and like, it's yeah. so interesting. Let's see. Yeah. I think I got it here. Should I play it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do it. That's it. That's the song. <laughs> That's the song. <laughs> so it might be the it might be the um, reception. Yeah. If you can't play it, I have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It's like I got it. Don't you worry. <laughs> It's like a personal assistant right here. I, I don't know. I know, Vinny. I think you need to make me your marketing person. Yeah. Why not, dude? <laughs> Help me make some some TikToks or something. Yeah, yeah social media, of the content creator. TikTok is hard. It is. Do you play with it? Like, yeah, I honestly, I okay. So like, I just been posting whatever because everyone's like, oh, just post whatever and see what sticks. And then now I'm at the point where like people are like, no, you got to be more like streamlined. I'm like, so what is it? What do I do? Like, I don't know what to you do. have to like utilize your music for sure within your TikTok, yeah. but also yeah. like kind of like not follow the trends, but like yeah. see what's trending for producers and yeah. then kind of like put yeah. your spin on it. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm not on it enough to really know like what they're. That's yeah, the what hard part of like I probably should TikTok be and social there, media right? in general is like. I, I can speak at least for myself and I think I speak for them too. We do research, a lot yeah. of research in advance, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, yeah, if there's a great idea, we put it out there, but it's like, we're doing research, looking for sounds, looking for what's popular, yeah. looking for yeah. what's like working for and sure. then also balancing it out with what will I actually enjoy making? Yeah. 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 Well, mm -hmm. I have a life hack for you. Um, go on TikTok and mm -hmm. look up a word. You could put producer, you could put um, new track or anything that you want the video to be about. And then mm -hmm. you could filter it to the most liked within the recent like three months. And okay. then that's what's trending within the recent three months. And if you okay. make a video that's similar to that, you have the higher, uh, there's a higher chance of it like popping off. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also feel like uh, just like interesting mashups tend to do well. Yeah. Um, like just pairing things together that don't work. Um, I also, there's this artist that um, I talk about all the time on the podcast too. His name's uh, Aaron Highbell. I don't know if you've heard of him, okay. but uh, he has his own series where he does, um, he calls it monastery sounds where he plays in front of a monastery mm. and that like blew him up. Like I remember yeah. when I, cause uh, I also found him in college. He was really small back then yeah. and now he's got like 120 K on Instagram or whatever. And he's like, his TikTok is like blown the fuck up, yeah. but um, it, he's like that. That's like his thing now. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah. he's the producer that plays in front of a monastery and yeah. he plays like uh, he plays like trance, techno, like deep house now. So it's it's pretty cool. Crazy, yeah. So yeah, I feel like if you if you find something interesting like that or um, do yeah. like the like crazy weird mashups, like those tend to work mm -hmm. pretty well. Or like Wookie and oh, Crank that they do where they yeah. have like a split yeah. screen and then mm -hmm. I'm pretty yep. sure you've seen it where like the bottom, yeah. like they show like how they made the sound or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I definitely need to like study it more, you know? Yeah. Just kind of study and just, I don't know. I've just been posting random videos and like, there, I mean, there's been a couple of my TikToks of the, it, usually it's like the festival stuff, like me playing at like yeah. a, a big show or something. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know, wow, they so, keep posting those. Those do well. I guess so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just people, recycle. Yeah. They want to see you play. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. They want to feel like they're with you and that yeah. they're connected with you. Yeah. Just the live content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, I'm playing this song now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. This, is, oh man, this song is old. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. This Have cute. I not shown you this before? No, really, it's cute. <laughs> when I hear this though, I'm like, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> Why is it because it's your past work? Just so old. Yeah, but but so good. <laughs> this was like during the time all the like future bass C like. Uh, very like poppy, happy sounding music was like really popular. Yeah.
Nan likes this part. Ooh, yeah. It's always the filtered wubs. <laughs> I just, I love that sound. The filtered yeah. wubs always do it for me. Yeah. It's just so stabby. This, I think this is my favorite part. Cause like the very subtle. And I just have to play this next part because I, uh, I love, um, bird, bird chirping in songs. Yeah. So same, when, when same, you added that right? later, yeah. I was like, oh, I, I immediately like the song. <laughs> Yeah, the birds. <laughs> I, I swear, if you add bird chirping to a sound, it makes it five times better. For you sure. Know, he, he, really <laughs> like, he really does pay attention because there's yeah. one time we were on the phone and we were just chatting. He's like, Nan, are you near birds right now? And <laughs> it, was was. Yeah, it was recently. Yeah, recently. Like, there was literally birds around where I was. I'm like, I was like, yes. I love birds chirping. Oh, that's why you left my recent video <laughs> with the birds chirping. No. <laughs> I just thought it was funny, your expressions. <laughs> I made a video of like just me tripping. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't like, even explain it. To be, like, I oh, I've seen that. I've seen like the trend and really I've yeah, seen a couple like, people do like the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the appeal to that song is the simplicity to it. Yeah. Which is something I'm trying to do more of now. I think like a lot of people are realizing, especially with like, you know, social media, like what sticks is really, really simple yeah song 100 percent. that's yep. it you know yeah like some of the most you know some of the biggest songs are just very simple mm -hmm. and yeah. um you know i'm i like like i said like i like experimental weird stuff but some of it's just too there's just too much going on it's very niche like i i get that i like that stuff too mm -hmm. it's just so niche like i i the, what the people want to hear is if you want it to go big, you know, it's yeah. definitely just very, very simple, you yeah. know? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, I noticed like a lot of your, a lot of your music has like, um, one, like a couple elements to it that are just really strong. Like yeah. your yeah. baseline is always really strong, Yeah, which is like, and that's like what gives it that funk vibe. Mm -hmm. And I think like, that's what captivates, at least I can speak for me. That's what captivates me so much is I just really like that, like funk sound, kind of sure. like that want to like get up and dance yeah, yeah sound yeah. and so um and then you add like the like the future bassy happier sounding elements to it which i think is like the lewis the child element uh, for I sure guess if we want to call it that yeah um and so those two combined is like you, yeah. you're already hitting a 10 out of 10 for me yeah thank you yeah i mean that's what i like is just like a couple key driving elements and then yeah. like some you know, more obscure sounds that are in the background that some people will be like, oh, I noticed that, you know? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Uh, that's actually something I learned. So uh, during pandemic, fun fact, I, I took music production classes and I was trying to learn and whatnot. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things I learned was like, it's okay to like, you know, cook your music and make it like a million, like a whole bunch of different channels and layers. Mm -hmm. But if they're all on top of each other, it just gets muddled and then too much For going sure. on. But if you separate things out, mm -hmm. like having a couple of sounds at the same time, mm -hmm very very simple move on to the next move on to the next have like underlying things but yeah everyone always tries to like put oh i like this and this and like i want all this to happen all at the same time like i don't know what i'm listening to now <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah sometimes too much going on is just you know it's just not going to catch on you know mm -hmm. that's the thing people yeah. can't there's not there's too much to pay attention to so they pay attention to nothing yeah exactly exactly um, also, I wanted to uh, quickly, because I know we were talking about uh, making this one of the topics uh, on today's episode, but I wanted to bring it back to how uh, we ran into each other at the exchange yeah, and how yeah. you're on the episode today. Yep. Um, so Vinny and I ran into each other at the exchange a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, since I've been following him for a long time, um, I recognize him. So I went up to him and, and talked to him. But the reason I was even at exchange that night is so funny. My ex-girlfriend from high school hit me up and i i helped promote for like the insomniac club so like exchange academy yeah. and um so 
she had asked me, and she's like, hey, um, do you happen to have guest list for uh, Dr. P and, and Funk Case tonight? And I was like, oh, I do. And then I was just like, are you, are you going? And uh, she's like, yeah, like me and some friends are going to go. And I, I hadn't seen her in like 10 years. Oh, so shit. I was like, you know what? I'm going to like stop by and say <laughs> what's up. You know, like I haven't <laughs> talked to her in like a long time. Did you she know? invite like, you or did you invite yourself? No, I mean, I was just like, I, well, I, I wasn't like, I'm going to go and join you. I was like, I'm going to okay, stop right, by right. the club. Okay, right. like, yeah. like, I'm just going to go to my place of work. <laughs> yeah, because I go I go a lot to the to the shows just to like stop by and like, you know, it helps me meet new people. Yeah, Example yeah. A, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I stopped by, like I, you know, I hit up, um, hit up a friend and then we went and then... Um, and then when we were looking for her, that's when I saw you just like standing in line yeah, at the yeah, bar. Yeah. I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, and I remember telling my friend, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's like, that's, that's Robin Zora. I know him. I'm like, I listen to his music all the time. I think I'd even shown her like some of your music too. I'm like, yo, you remember this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we just thought it was really interesting. And then we were talking about how like, well, that's a good question to like, I, completely unrelated to music, but like, can you still be friends with your ex? Do you guys think you can still be friends with your ex? <laughs> I feel like this is a, a very big, long yeah, conversation yeah, that's hard a, to talk about. It's you a know? big conversation because it, it depends on how so like they end it, how much time so is in many between yeah. the relationship. To, I think to, time is a factor. Yeah. Time sure, heals yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think the answer is yes. You can be, but there's so many variables. Yes. And let me let me phrase it further. You can be, but you don't have to be. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the thing. You don't have to be friends. Yeah. You don't have to not be friends. Anything's possible. For sure. But that's why all the variables matter. Because it's it's yeah. very dependent. Because like two people could literally date for like a number of years and then realize, look, we're just not compatible. I still love you as a person. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to be in a romantic relationship with you anymore. For sure. And it could yeah. be mutual. And you're like, hey, just still close, still hang out, yeah. all that. Um, but for some people, it, it is difficult to like you know be able to revert back to being friends yeah you know because like you've already been able to get that close and then like mm -hmm. then the other variables are new relationships yeah. you know yeah. if you're in a new relationship and it's just like you can't be that close with an ex yeah yeah if all this time has passed it's like a matter of like well like do you really even care enough to right you know to like want to go out of your way to maintain that relationship which i get you know well it, that that's where my argument comes in is yeah because like if you were already friends, if you were already best friends. Like and before then, you got into a relationship. Exactly. Oh, if you were best friends before yeah. you got into a relationship, you're super close already and you tried it and it worked and maybe something happened and it just wasn't working anymore. Yeah. You move on to new relationships. Well, is that person's no longer, you just stop being best friends also? Yeah. Yeah. I think like the first few years after, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, off limits, got to like stay away. And then yeah. after once it's been like, like you said, 10 years like that. Yeah. I feel like that is, it's, it's like almost like if you see them, it's kind of like, Oh, what's up? You know, yeah. how, mm -hmm. how have you been? You know, I mean, she's yeah. had a kid like yeah, now exactly. too. Like she, she had her whole life. Yeah. She, had her whole yeah, life. Yeah. she has like, you know, see, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if she's still in a relationship with the guy. I mean, she, but he was there too, yeah, but, yeah. but like, I, I don't, so I don't know what's going on there, but like, um, I just know that, you know, um, like she's already got her whole life. So to me, it didn't seem like a big deal yeah. um, at all. And like, yeah, it's just been so, it's been so long. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I want to add to that too. It's just like, not even, not even 10 years, give it a year, two years. You're a different person. Yeah, You are a sure. completely sure. different person mm -hmm. yeah. than you were two years ago. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. If you broke up because someone was disloyal or did something wrong or like really mm -hmm. betrayed the other person, well, it's now different. it's a matter of trust. Right. But yeah. if you just broke up because incompatibility, there's a very real chance you could even get back together because you're now in different places in life and yeah. may even be a different, different person or, or maybe you had the intention of getting back together yeah. years past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might not now because yeah, you're, again, you're a different person. So different, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I had a similar thing kind of happen with me. Um, I played this festival last year in Chicago, and um, my ex girlfriend was was there. And oh, she was there, and um, but I dated her in high school. She was she was actually playing the festival as well oh and, interesting yeah, so it makes it really interesting Whoa, that makes i don't want to get too spicy. deep into it because yeah, like, i don't, don't want to yeah. yeah but so <laughs> she was playing the festival i was playing the festival i think i had saw that beforehand and i was like oh this should be interesting but um yeah so i was there um, backstage and there was like an open bar and, and then she came right up to me and she's like hey what's up and i was just like oh what's up you know but it, I mean, it had been so long yeah. that it's just like, it's almost like just, it's very strange seeing people. It you is know, very it's strange. It's very strange. Like, it's like you know. feel like you know them, but you really don't because like they're yeah. a completely different person. Yeah. 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 And we started talking like, you know, like 
maybe just because I had been drinking a little bit and she had too, we were just kind of like, oh, like remember this and that, you know, and it's like, whoa, that's, it's just yeah. so strange. But yeah, I mean, 10 years removed, it's just like, we're both different people, different yeah. time. I mean, that was 20. 20- 11 or whatever you know yeah. and it's 2020 well it's 2022 20, back then yeah, last yeah, year yeah. but still like holy shit you yeah know? yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah yeah i i know like for me personally because like I, I i don't think there's a single ex that i've been with that i'm like not cool with anymore yeah. but there are definitely some that like like one lives like in another country now and she has yeah. like basically like practically a husband like yeah. and so like there that at that point there's like no point in even like Being keeping friends. in contact with yeah. each other i yeah. also like have another ex who um i'm pretty sure uh like so i mean we still follow each other on social media and everything um but she like never talks to me never engages with like any of my stuff and i think it's because she has a boyfriend now mm. and so it might look weird if she were to do that, <laughs> that she has you just, on mute <laughs> that, that might just be me assuming but like i you know that's that's yeah. what i would i would assume that that would be the reason why but i know we're still cool like i know yeah. we're like we're we, if we saw each other we would still like be friends and talk yeah. so being cordial is fine you know yeah. why not yeah totally that's how I see it. Just be cordial. Mm-hmm. Nothing more than that. You know, yeah. it's like, hey, yeah. what's up? Yeah. 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 No, I mean, when we were, when we, when I ended up running into her at the exchange, um, my ex from high school, like we were like totally just, I was just excited to see her. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, it, it's like, it's like seeing an old friend, you know, yeah. and um, it like purely, it felt purely like that and nothing else. I was also with another girl. So like, you know, there's not, it's not like anything would feel weird anyway, but, sure. um, but yeah, no, it was just like, we we're just happy to see each other and happy yeah. to like catch up for a little bit and hang out for a little bit, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah, no, it's so funny. I messaged her too. I'm like, yo, the fact that you went like actually made it so that like now we have this artist that I've been following for a long time going on the podcast. <laughs> it worked so, out. Yeah, yeah, I know. It worked out for Dr. P was playing, you said? Mm-hmm. So you like your bass, depth up. Well, so, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I was there because my, one of my best friends was opening for them. Like mm. I, I, I have no problem with dubstep. I like dubstep. It's fun. It's cool. You know? Um, and those guys, they're like, I mean, I remember seeing them back in the day, you know, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not as well versed in the dubstep scene yeah. anymore, but my, so yeah, my best friend was opening for them mm, and okay. I just went out to support him, you know? I- so it was fun. Yeah. Actually, there was like a mosh pit there and like I like was kind of in it. Like, I don't, <laughs> don't want to yeah. say I was in it, but yeah, like that's the first time in in many years that I have been in a mosh pit. Yeah. I'll say that. That Hell was funny. Yeah. But he, and he was playing too. So so I was like getting videos and like I was That's just, so funny. It was so fun. Yeah. What a good supporter. Mm-hmm. I've only been in one mosh pit and it was when uh 4B called me out in front of the entire exchange. Oh, and then I I, I broke a light. <laughs> let me let me just tell you, it was the most embarrassing day oh, yeah. of my fucking life because he told us to jump off the stage. He did. So we jump all off the stage. Yes, yeah, so we were behind we were backstage. So right we there. all jumped off the stage. Like stage dive or what? No, 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 no just like you know. Oh, oh. Like, like get off and like, like get go, off and and go into the crowd, crowd. Okay, okay. and um, respectfully every, and everyone's respectfully, doing it. Yeah. I I wasn't gonna do it, and then someone who I met there was like, "If Forby says to go in the mosh pit, you gotta go in the mosh yeah, pit." Yeah. And like I was like tunnel vision with the suit, so I was like, "Okay." And then like I jumped down, and then I dropped the those stage lights. I don't know what they're called, but like they're the oh. big lights, and it broke. You like hit one, and it yeah. broke. It fell on the yeah, floor, yeah. and it broke, and then and, we got kicked and out. And then we got kicked out <laughs> for the rest of the night. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, okay. We we didn't technically get kicked out, but like someone who was very angry clearly mm-hmm. and was clearly security came up if you don't get off the stage right now i will have to ask you i will remove you guys you can stay inside you just need to get off the stage mm, yeah damn but and I, like i get it like that light was probably thousands of dollars yeah they have insurance but like still like in that moment it's like okay these kids are a hazard let's yeah. get them off the stage but i've spoken to the guy who was kicking us off before like he works at another club and i, I apologize and i was yeah. like dude like i'm sorry and he was like no it's fine it was out of my control um i just had to get you guys off for safety but yeah because yeah. no it, yeah. it was literally in his ear he was being yelled at yeah like like yeah. he's being yelled at by someone else of like what the fuck like yeah, get yeah, them yeah. off the stage blah 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 yeah. but like obviously anyone who's on the floor at the time was like until something bad happens, it's okay. But as soon as something bad happens, it's like, why did we let it happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you know, you've been at the exchange backstage. It's just you got to go up the mm-hmm. stairs to the second floor, go behind, yeah. go down. It's just a lot it's of a work. Whole mission, so yeah, just to get yeah. to the crowd. Yeah, I mean, I've kicked some lights before. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've broken a couple lights. You know, but like, were you playing? You know, like it was your show. Um, 
Well, I I remember the last time I, I kicked a light, it was at, um, on tour with Dab and I, I accidentally, I think because all his lights were set up and it must have been after my set. I was in like, the room was small. It was in some weird city, some like really obscure city. Like, I don't know, like Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa or something. And, like, and I People actually- in Iowa right now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was trying to get off stage and like, I, I had to like jump over all these lights, you uh -huh. know, because the stage was a little bit smaller for that one. Yeah. And um, I remember I actually kicked one and, and it, it turned off and I was like, oh shit, did that break? I don't know. <laughs> but I just walked away. I, I don't know. It's okay. Wait, so no one even knew it was you? I don't, well, I don't, maybe, maybe they fixed it. I don't know. Oh, okay. I hope so. <laughs> I think you're doing Des Moines, Des Moines, Iowa a favor because nothing probably happens over there. So like, yeah. that's the most exciting thing that's happened. Oh, <laughs> sure. yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't come for me. I will be the best. Joke. They're gonna I'm come making, on the I'm comments making, like, "Yo, we got make, potatoes, man." I'm making a joke, all right? <laughs> Des Moines. Uh, shout out Des Moines. Yeah, shout out Des Moines. Thanks, Des Moines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so Project Glow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we went to Project Glow this last weekend, and it was, it was, it was cool. I just, I just want to talk about this, the funny article that I read about it. Um, so oh, the yeah. second year in the row, second year in a row. So it's a brand new festival. Where in was it at? Washington, D.C. Okay. Yeah. So it was the second year in a row. And we were the next morning after the first night or a second night, we started reading these articles about like uh, people in the city in the neighborhood area complaining about how late it went. They were just mm. like, this is so inconsiderate. We have work in the morning. Music should not be playing past 11 p.m. I'm just like, I'm the festival sorry. What was the at venue? 11. What was the venue? What was the venue? Uh, RFK Grounds. Yeah. Um, it's it's like, it, it looks like it's like part of a college campus. Okay. Like there's like a, there's like a stadium next to it, which I actually thought the festival was going to be in the stadium. Oh, that's but close. it wasn't. It's kind of like yeah. uh, the OC Fairgrounds kind of. Kind area. of. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. And uh, that's a good comparison actually. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, granted there were a lot of like neighboring, um, like just neighborhoods yeah. nearby it's just it's just funny to me that it said yeah they're complaining about 11 p.m and then we got like the festivals and shows we have out here in we san bernardino yeah, yeah, the yeah, Nas center the yeah. center they're all like, just used to it they so. just go to like 2 a.m they complain when it gets to like 4 a.m and you have raised yeah. like the uk just going until fucking 8 a.m yeah. 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 yeah all night long yeah yeah or like even edc which is going until five or six you know oh, but like that city doesn't sleep so um i just want to give people like a rave dad tip because this this was super annoying for us um yeah. if you want to extend your hotel make sure you, you oh. get it extended so long story short i i prepaid oh, everything via chase got the two nights that we stayed there we decided let's extend we go the night the night before the before the morning after the festival yeah. and we tell them like hey yeah can we extend this and she's like yeah of course you can extend it blah 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 all this stuff how much will it be it'll be this much great fantastic is there anything else we need <sighs> to do nope you're good the next morning we get knocked on our door like three five. times no it was three to five times for sure and oh, then the guy is like so super annoyed. mad like you haven't paid for your room blah 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 yeah, then they sell your room to someone else Mm. that's the thing they we i we went the night before yeah. to confirm that everything's paid for all that just for that reason so they would to not avoid wake us up and and yeah. they still did anyway like oh well it's prepaid so you have to like buy a whole new room what oh that's they annoying. didn't tell you that they could have just told us that last yeah. night like yeah. why didn't you do that but the woman that was working the front i think either she didn't know or she just like she's because she was like yeah i got you guys like yeah. she was like she was like yeah, yeah, yeah i'll take care of it and so we were like Great, you know, like awesome. Yeah. So we went back to our room. We're like, great, we're gonna sleep until freaking one a.m. or yeah. one p.m. Right, yeah. and um, and then yeah, literally like, uh, what was it? Ten a.m. We get a knock on our door. Eleven a.m. We get a knock on our door again oh at twelve. God. And then by the, by this time, it's like there's this like big dude outside. He's like, you guys need to pay for your room. And so he's like, like, was at ten o'clock? Yeah. should be getting up. Like he's just he was getting, like oh, so rude. And we're like we're like half awake. Nand and I are at the door, and we're just like, they said that we were good last night. He's like, no, that's not how that works. You have to go pay for like for a new room, and I'm like, what? The? I'm like, we literally did this. Nan's attitude kicks in. His half tired attitude kicks in. He's like, well, we did this last night, and like, we, we like took care of it last night. The person at the front desk said to us that it is taken care of. I looked her in the eye and I said, is there anything else we need to do? Is it taken care of? Yeah. How much is the room? Oh, it's great. How do I pay? Yes, done. Cool. Have a good night. And and he's like, well, that's not how it works. 
cool well then your front desk person fucked up we'll go pay for it right now but you should know they yeah. fucked up and then yeah. he was like oh well sorry there must have been a miscommunication but you know and then it was yeah. just like All right, i well. that, that was one of the big moments where i wish you were there bryn because i know you would have caused the biggest scene and gotten our, <laughs> gotten our money yeah. back i guarantee it you would have i would have gotten the free room 100 <laughs> percent. Yeah. i have no doubt but since we were so exhausted we were just like not yeah, yeah. we just wanted it. to sleep yeah I, I was supposed to go but i missed my flight yeah mm. i'm petty like that too though i, I <laughs> I, I cause like scenes like not cause scenes wait but, you well yeah like if it's something like that like I'll definitely be like, if hey. it makes sense to cause a scene then I'm gonna cause a scene you um, know? Yeah, I yeah. actually agree with that I, I yeah. took a it was a very long time for me to realize it's not a bad thing to be petty like yeah, I used yeah. to get shit for being petty but like it's not a bad thing if there's yeah, good yeah. reason behind it for sure like I'm not gonna be like real annoying but like mm-hmm. I'll definitely like if if it's you know all set in stone I'll be like you know, hey, like I paid for this shit. Like I, yeah. I'm good to go. Like don't give me a hard time. Yeah. Hotel Pentagon, Washington yeah. DC. No, don't go there. I was gonna ask. <laughs> no. Like I was gonna ask if we were gonna out the no. <laughs> no. Hotel Pentagon, Washington no, DC. No, we have don't a platform. No, we have a platform. We can't do that. I don't think people should go there. I think they should actually get their stay somewhere else. I. You know that's, what? Fair, that's fair it, it, that's it fair it is fair but also like human error like is real yeah. and it's a thing and i'm like the last thing that you want is her job like for her to lose her job yeah i guess i'm not true. saying her name that's true yeah, yeah we haven't knows. said her name could be anyone also um, honestly i don't even know her name also i think i think it's just worthy wor- uh, worth noting that like i mean this is mainly just for like ravers who are going to stay yeah. in dc mm-hmm. like it's more of like we're just giving him a tip like yeah. if you can find another place you might want to go and look yeah. at another place. Even, I mean... At the bare minimum, the tip I'm giving is make sure everything's taken care of because there is human error like that. And then, like, people people will just be rude just to be rude because that security guy in the morning did not have to be rude to us. Yeah, no, there is no yeah. reason. He yeah. did not have to be rude. So that being said, yeah. the tip I'm giving is, you know, make sure everything's taken care of. Make sure you, everything's paid for. Like, we yeah. tried to do our due diligence of, like, going the night before to make sure that that extra room was extended and paid yeah. for so we wouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm make sure it's paid period yeah. like triple check triple yeah. check quadruple check what yeah. have you it like, also like wasn't the best hotel so like it's it's one of those things where it's like i mean i guess you kind of get what you pay we're for we're balling on like, a budget yeah. that's true we well, were balling on a budget so. I, I will say and it's uh, i gotta i gotta do the math again but the cost of that extension that one day yeah was more than the previous two nights that we paid for t- all together that's so funny you guys should have just went to a, a new hotel yeah, but then that would have defeated. Then the we would have had to get our stuff and because, pack it. You guys were already up, you know. You guys could have. We would have had to pack oh, yeah. everything. It would have taken there hours. Was already, then, automatically, there was going to be a late fee. There's no. There's no. But that was already on them, you know. You could be like, okay, then we're going to leave. We're not going to buy another night, and we're just going to go somewhere else. Yeah, but the whole point was to be able to sleep in and yes. have that extra day. So, like at that point, then let's just not get another yeah, room. We just wanted to sleep. Yeah. Where in DC was this? Um, it was in Arlington. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, DC is cool. DC is cool. We I had, actually agree. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, our yeah. our friend, uh, one of our friends, is um, like he's from DC and he's like extremely well connected. Unknown caller. Unknown caller. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I put it on silent. Here, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Hangs up. <laughs> My bad. You're good. It's it's probably because it's connected the to the. Yeah. yeah. It says do not disturb is on. So. Oh, they must have called you twice then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, if they called you twice, then yeah. it'll yeah. automatically go through. Okay. Um. But yeah. So our our friend uh, is a uh, uh, he's from DC, but he's oh he's always everywhere. He's in LA. New yeah. York. Yeah. So he's very well connected, and he did like he brought us on like a full a full um food day. That's the oh the, yeah the video I was showing you that Monday after became a full food adventure. He, like we got to meet the owners he, of all these places. Yep. and they took Whoa. care of us yep. and like yeah. let me just say y'all y'all didn't have to and i am unbelievably grateful that yeah. they did shout out Damn. me project shout out chase and tails uh, yeah. mainly sam thank sam you and Twitney, Twitney. thank you and then edric of course who was our friend who yeah. showed us around thank you and oh, like yeah. i don't know i just got really inspired by them too it's just like because we got to know them a little bit as like people and i wanted to hear about their like how did you you know create this restaurant be an mm-hmm. entrepreneur all these things I'm oh like, yeah because they're young yeah they're young they're like our age they're young yeah, and they yeah. already got multiple restaurants and all these things and I'm yeah. just like geez what am I doing with my life <laughs> I, make, I make TikToks hey, I want to own a restaurant someday that'd be cool it's funny yeah. though because they probably they they like kind of look at us that way though like they they see our platforms and they're like whoa like that's crazy they have like a social media f- like they it's like the way that we look at them but in the other way yeah, around you yeah. know so it's kind of funny I think still yeah. still all f- beautiful amazing food and yeah. people it was such a good time yeah. you said you would like to open up a restaurant 
Yeah, why not? Yeah. What kind of restaurant? I don't know. Well, okay, so I I worked, I used to work at this um, uh, Shabu restaurant. You know, like Shabu? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I worked at this restaurant, and uh, the owner of that restaurant, we became, like, really good friends. And that was one of my favorite jobs ever, like, back in the day. And uh, and he kind of was just showing me the ropes, and he made me think, like, man, like, I could just i could do this myself you know like damn you know so i don't know maybe open up something like that you know i don't know it's very open possible yeah. i mean sam opened up his uh korean barbecue plate from the moment he thought decided you know what i want to do this one year later yeah. it opened so if you weren't doing music would you do the restaurant or is there yeah, something else know. that you would want to do if i wasn't doing music um i don't know i think i would probably be doing something with i it's hard to say so my my parents are photographers like Sick. professional oh. photographers that was kind of like what I thought I could be doing, you know, right. but the family business, I don't know if that's what I'd want to do, you yeah. know, um, I, maybe I'd probably want to do something like I wanted to be like a marine biologist. Oh, That would be cool. I mean, I've had so many different things. Like I wanted to be in film as well. Nice. So Hell yeah. yeah. Did um, you graduate with a degree? No, in, okay. I don't have a degree. No, I mean, need, I, I don't need one. Yeah, no, 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 because no, he's a marine biologist, so I'm just like assuming yeah. oh, that, like, whoa. well, I was always, I mean, I was always interested in that, you know, but I mean, I could have went to school for it, I, or I could have went to school for film. I don't know, like, yeah, it's like my music, like it's just like all over the place, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I don't know, I don't know, what I, I don't know what I'd like to do. I love like animals. I love, uh, all yeah, I don't know. I, I well, I have some questions that were a little hinge on on that though, in terms of like what you did uh, up to the point where music was like your main career. Yeah. Um. So I, I I'm just curious, like what what jobs you worked, and then h- about how long it took until you were like at the point where oh, I, music can be like pretty much my main source of income. Yeah. Well, so I started off working for my parents for their photo studio. That was like the first job I ever had, but that was like a long time ago. Mm. Then I, uh, my first official job, I worked at Target. I worked at Target for a few years, actually. I worked there for like three or four years. And then um, I moved to Orange County. And in Orange County, I was, I was just like, you know what? I just want to work a shit ton and make money and make music when I can. Yeah. But uh, so I moved to Orange County. I got a job at Whole Foods and then I worked a pizza delivery job. Nice. And I was just delivering pizzas for a while. And then um and then I got another pizza delivery job and then I got the job at the Shabu restaurant. Right. I worked some other like jobs in between that, you know. But yeah, I mean there was a time I was working like two jobs. Like I would get up Oh damn. Yeah, I mean I would get up and, and go to work at Whole Foods at like six in the morning, get off at at two and then go to deliver pizzas from like three to 11 you know wow. damn and look at you now yeah, yeah. I know, it's crazy that's like uh yeah. melissa our friend uh one of our friends that was with us in in dc mm-hmm. she um she, geico. yeah she okay yeah we, we can mention it yeah, right? yeah. geico and hooters geico, geico and hooters so okay. uh, geico during the day and then hooters at night and she worked from what was it like five or no six to what six to like one and more then, than more than 10 hours yeah or, yeah six six to like two or three and then like she had one a one hour gap yeah and then she'd work like four until uh i don't know one in the morning or something yeah and i'm like when do you sleep i know and i'm just like holy shit like yeah. that's respectable yeah making money you know Gotta but hustle. yeah and honestly like i some of those jobs i actually really liked i don't know what it is but like looking back on it now like a lot of people like oh man i had this like shitty job but like like delivering pizzas was fun as hell really yeah it was so much fun like i because i it was in orange county it was in um newport coast not newport but newport coast so it was like i would deliver pizzas to like kobe's house you know oh so like kobe like like, would come in and like whenever he came in like the room would go silent it's like holy shit you know that's so fun well you delivered pizzas to kobe i would deliver pizzas to kobe's house i think i just found the title of this yeah 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 it's crazy you know and and shout um, out to kobe shout out kobe yeah man, shout out the legend for real the legend yeah so i remember um there was one time he he came in and he was like he's like hey uh, i want he always ordered the same thing it was a, he's like can i get a medium combination uh and uh or two medium combination pizzas 
And and then he was like, oh, you know what? I got to go. Can you actually deliver it to my house? And I was just like, okay, yeah, sure. And he's like, you know where I live, right? And I was just like, so like every time he came in, I was so starstruck, you know? Yeah. And, and I was just like, I forgot where he lived, you know? I was like, uh, can you write it down? And he kind of, <laughs> he had this look on his face like, oh my God, are you fucking serious? Like, you know? And then, and he wrote it down. And then I was like, oh, I need you to sign this too. Every time he signed as well, I was like, I could take that and just like sell that receipt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, I never did. But I, okay. yeah. <laughs> anyways, yeah. So, but Kobe legend, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing was so sad when all that went down. Yeah. yeah. How many years has it been now? Since that happened in 2020? 2020? Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. 2020. Like three huh? years. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was crazy. Peace. Yeah. I remember me, uh, meeting him in 2019. Mm-hmm. Damn! Yeah. I, was bartending, I was bartending uh, his uh, Mamba Mamba Academy or like his basketball yeah. thing oh, in, oh, uh, up the, uh, out there, and uh, I, I remember meeting him. And then, like, what year later that yeah. the whole damn. tragedy yeah. happens? I remember waking up and just like the first people I was texting was like all my coworkers. For I, I wasn't actually working there at the time; I had already quit. But yeah. um, I was like, oh my god. Yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Aren't there like some conspiracies around that whole thing too? I think so. Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it's like that whole thing kind of just happened out of nowhere. It was like during yeah. the Oscar. It was like before the Oscars. He was like flying to the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. Does oh, anyone? Do, do any of you guys know what the conspiracies no. are? Do you want to? Hey Jay, would you mind looking up? <laughs> yeah, like a as you're taking BTS. I don't. I don't. The uh, I'm curious. Well, whenever to know there's what the someone like with money, are. or there's someone that like has a lot of like fame, there's always a conspiracy on like their deaths. Uh, I mean. Yeah. I will just say helicopters are insanely not safe. Yeah. Let me just true. be very clear. Like there's there's this whole saying in uh f- like the film industry to not get in a helicopter for really? any reason. Really? I'm going to get on one for you to see. Oh. Up to you. That is completely up to you. But like like there's you can look into it. The number of accidents, the number of horror stories revolving around film and helicopters is just way too high. Really? This is what my mentor told me that her professor told her. And it's just like there's just this thing about helicopters. They are in because generally speaking, they're not exactly the safest uh, um, transportation out yeah. there. You know what I mean? Neither like, was a car. Neither was a plane. Actually, planes and cars are significantly more safe. Either than way, you're risking something. Yeah. I'm not going to get into it honestly that's not a conversation I want to have but like quite literally whoa statistics and logic there's still risk in everything that you do no absolutely but the helicopters are just, they're known for not being safe they're just so so unbelievably Yo. unsafe all right you guys, so you guys will hear this this article which is from the sportsrush.com said Kobe Bryant was waging battle with Big Pharma over their opioids laced energy pill died three days before their court date the only thing I have to say about that is uh, is what about his daughter though yeah I mean this this might sound fucked up but collateral damage yeah Yeah. whoa that's crazy says the black mom is one of the most popular okay blah 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 the fad of eat a pill and lose weight was gaining popularity in the mid 2010s and this pill catered to exactly that kobe had been battling for three years he had sent several notices to the company to stop using the name that's from the pharmaceutical um, industry uh yes like they're the ones who are creating this pill uh they said oh wait the black mamba is that what they were calling it wait why was he waging war on them hold on Kobe had been battling for three years. He had sent several notices to stop. Okay, stop using the name. I think they were using the name Black Mamba. Oh. I think. Yeah. And then... Um, well, they got a lot of money. They got a lot of power. Yeah. yeah. They retaliated saying that it was an animal that they were using, and Roger Mayweather also shared that name. The Lakers man had s- sent in a notice to the company saying that they used the word hyper in the product, which Nike had used for his products. A coincidence? He did not think so. Mm. And the battle between the Giants was about to conclude three days bef- after that fateful morning. Yeah. I mean, not saying it's true or not. That, yeah. that one sounds a little more like a stretch, I would say. But yeah. like, you never know. I think, I, think it, it, I can see why people have that conspiracy, because yeah. the man took a helicopter everywhere, all the time. Mm. So... You would imagine someone with uh, that kind of access and power and money to a helicopter on a daily basis would have a helicopter that is to standard, you know, like, yeah. you know, you, you check it all the time. But I, keep in mind, I haven't read about this in years. Something about like the helicopter wasn't like there was like mechanical error due to like there not was a fog that day. maintenance and yeah. something about like poor maintenance on the helicopter. I'm like, really? 
Yeah, really? that's a little. That's why it's kind of fishy. Really, right? you think you, that of all of all people who use it every day, there's yeah. no maintenance. Mm. Oh man, so, right. I know. Sad so sad. Our society is so built on conspiracies, though. Yeah, we always sure. think yeah, there's like there's no way that no. there's no way that's a coincidence. Yeah. No way it's accident. You never know. We How never know. It? We don't know a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. But um. But yeah. So but bringing it back to pizzas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. so that, that was what you said that was one of your favorite that was jobs one of my favorite jobs delivering pizzas also like you know just um i mean i knew that area so well i got to know it so well it's so beautiful what an area i mean yeah orange county is you know on the coast there it was right next to crystal cove kind of near yep. laguna beach oh that's a great area i grew up in orange county so okay, uh, yeah. i grew up in Cer- uh, cerritos la palma yeah so oh, yeah. um yeah so I, i'm very familiar crystal cove is beautiful it's cerritos beautiful. is considered orange county really uh, so, sorry so, so cerritos is actually on the is it's actually on the, yeah it's, it's on like, like the border ver- right? it's the very mm-hmm. end yeah because i was in pico we were like neighbors yeah oh Oh, really? Isn't it like yeah. Westminster uh, is also like yeah. right in the border there? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Westminster, yeah. yeah. Uh, w- w- Huntington w- is as well, but on the coast. Cause well, like actually, Hunting- Westminster, I think, is the other way, though, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, Westminster's inland, but I'm, I'm saying right. like, I lived in Huntington and, and Huntington. Yeah. Um, My dad lives in Huntington. Yeah, Huntington's chill, but I mean, you go a little bit north and you're in Long Beach, you know? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I also lived in Costa Mesa for a bit. Ooh, you know? that's nice. nice. We're, yeah. we're we're in Costa Mesa here and there. Yeah, yeah. The time, time time is over there. Oh, that's right. Our yeah. friends, <laughs> our friends are over there. Some of our yeah. friends. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do love Orange County. You know, Orange County is really. Fun. You don't like it? <sighs> uh, did you grow up there? Or no, I did. Okay, so, that's why, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I just got I just got bored. Yeah. It was just it's just bo- I like the city. I like, yeah. like you like fast paced. I like boom, fast boom, paced. Boom, boom. Things are happening. I think yeah, that's yeah. Like, it's very dependent on lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, what what is your lifestyle like? Let me ask you a question because you went to school in San Diego. Mm. I went to school in San Diego. Yeah. How was it? The city itself. Boring. Uh, the city was good. Slow. Well, it it was. It could. I think it was just the fact that I was in a lot of activities like Greek life and stuff made it more fast paced. Mm-hmm. But San Diego as a whole is generally chill. Yeah, but um, but if you live in the city, it it can be a little more exciting. Yeah, um, it, I would say it's it's not to the level of Los Angeles, but yeah. it's almost on no, par. No, like San Diego is like a sprint. LA is like you're running. Yeah, like yeah. really yeah. running fast. Yeah, but I think I I think I might be like that because I grew up. Um, just doing so many things like I was put in like every sport imaginable like my my dad threw me in like every sport so I I was I would literally go from like school to like straight to baseball practice straight home to like study then wake up do the next day and then the next day I'd have basketball practice like that later that day you know and you had a just, routine yeah. yeah I just I had so many like like different things that I was doing that I didn't really I didn't have like a ton of free time you know, so I think because of that, I just like that fast paced, like yeah. lifestyle mm-hmm. of yeah. like always having something to do Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I can see how OC might be a little slow then. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just exactly. And, and, and frustrating too, because you have access to all those things. Yeah. With a 45 minute drive minimum. Yeah. So yeah. annoying. Traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're traffic. Yeah. It's been I an mean, hour and a half. To me, OC is like fast pace only because i'm from marietta so it's like uh, there's okay. nothing out there yeah. you know yeah i've been to marietta a few times for uh, yeah. baseball actually yeah yeah travelable. that's where i grew up you know yeah. and um orange county was kind of like oh you know that's like the cool place you want to go to the beach you know we well, once we got our licenses and everything we're yeah. like let's go to orange county let's go to huntington let's go to <laughs> you know let's go here and- that's funny because it like orange county was like your la to me yeah. Like- <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we we would go to la but you know la was only for going to like shows and yeah. stuff you know yeah. but yeah. orange county was like the cool place you want to go to yeah know? yeah i mean i will say there's a lot a lot of good food places in oc yeah. for sure mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah and oc OC is a very like settled down and have a family kind Most of Most definitely. Yeah. yeah, I agree I, with I that. I agree with that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this. I feel like Pasadena and or OC is kind of where I- Pasadena, yeah. Like that's kind of where I want to end up eventually. Pasadena's like, o- it's like uh, OCLA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Like, like yeah. you have a little bit more access. Like yeah. if you want to go get tacos at 2 a.m., you can. But yeah. if you're an yeah. OC, eh. Well, you can get tacos at, at 2 a.m. Yeah, in, no, in LA. LA but in LA. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You're closer to LA. Yeah, like, so. it, like the, the, the appeal to LA, in my opinion, is like you can get a phone call at 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. and you'll be like, I, I can be there in 10 minutes. Yeah. 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 You're, we're in OC. You're just not going to get that phone call typically. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, well, or it's yeah. like, you want to come to this kickback? Or, or, or <laughs> yeah, at the yeah, club yeah. that we went to. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, and <laughs> it's in Anaheim. Yeah, that's well, like, after we went to Guardians of the Galaxy, we went. There was this. Uh, we mm, were at the Garden Walk in mm. Anaheim, and there was this random club. Let me tell a, you this story because this man wanted to go home. He wa- he was okay. he was about to go to his wait, car. Wait, real quick though. Shout out to the bartender, by the way, yes, who worked at the lounge. Yeah. Who knew us? And, was, and, and the um the dude at the front. What are they called? The the bouncer. The bouncer. I'm the bouncer who mm-hmm. let us in because I heard music and I'm like, we're gonna go to this music. <laughs> so I start walking. And I'm just like, follow me. We go yeah. to the bouncer and I'm like, we're on guest list. Obviously. Say we're not guest list and he's like oh like guest Typical list like guest list like clothes or whatever and i was like yeah like we're but to be honest we're from la like we're not even from here um oh, so we, you were honest with him yeah i told oh. him after but like oh. obviously like i'm gonna like sprinkle in a couple things uh, here and yeah, there to like yeah. try to get my way and then um <laughs> and then I, no comment <laughs> and then uh, he was like he was hesitated for a bit. He was like, well, typically it's $20 a night. It ends at 2 a.m., so I don't know if it's worth it. And I was like, yeah, it's really not worth it. We really just want to check out the club. And he was like, okay, I don't do this, but here. Like, give me your IDs. Let me check up, and you guys go in. We yeah. get into the club. It's like 30 minutes. Huh? Because you're only going to be there for like 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah for real. Exactly. And then we, we asked him, and he, we, we were, I was honest, like, where we were from. So we get into the club. We get a drink. Um, and then the bartender, uh, he was like, he recognized us. Yeah. So, like, he was chill. He was super cool. And then we go into the... Um, we go into like the stage area and like it's not like it just doesn't smell the greatest and i'm like i do not want to be here we're gonna get backstage so like we walk uh, to the backstage area and i asked like one of the guys who's like back there and i'm like can we chill here i know the i know the dj who previously played and he was like oh like you know our man i was like yeah i know our man but i can't <laughs> but, like, but i can't find him anywhere so like i'm just alone with my brother and like he's our brother yeah. um, and he's like i mean like yeah like you could chill here wait um, was this the table no, no, the, no, this was a backstage. Okay, you're getting to the table. Yeah, I'm getting yeah, to the yeah. table. Um, and then, like, one of his friends was like, oh, like, like, who does she know? And he was like, oh, she knows our man. He's like, oh, okay, okay. And he turned around. <laughs> so, mile. technically, we could have just chilled there, but I got bored real quick because it was, like, a really, like, small backstage um, area. Yeah. And I was like, I'm bored. Let's go. Um, And I was like, let's go to a table. So, I see a table. I see the first person who looks approachable. And I go up to him. And then I'm like, um, can we party at your table? And he's like... Yeah, but like, who's we? And I'm like, miss me and my brother. And then he was like, I don't know. You have to ask him. And I'm like, come on, let's take shots. Like, I totally ignored like the, what they were about to do. And I was like, let's take shots, let's take shots. And then like, the he guy on the other side of the table was like, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah take the Ciroc bottle. And then the bottle. bottle was empty, and I was like, there's no more alcohol. And he's like, he has more. And he goes but, to the other guy. He's like, get, get out the other bottle. Yeah, get, and the guy, get for the alcohol. No, the guy goes. <laughs> he goes he pulls out an entire bottle, bottle of Syrah. He was about to steal that bottle from the club because you know how you're not allowed to take the bottles so they yeah. gave you a bottle service? He it was, still had the little thing on yeah. the top. <laughs> he oh was about to take it home. God. But he gave it to us and like we were just like drinking from it. We partied for a second and like all the girls that were sitting at the <laughs> at the table immediately at the same time it was like the, like the matrix like they all stood up at the same exact time and it's like because that Bryn got there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was like shots, shots, shots. Oh the guy God. leads over to me he's like is that really your sister? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you guys are good. Yeah. And, and we were you know, fully sober at this time. By this time, we were fully sober. We, we've got it down to a science. You know, so. yeah. you know. Could you could you like just give me like more than an hour's notice next time, please? You could have made it. You chose no, not I to. No, I couldn't have. No, you could have. Oh, no. They called me at ten. No, no, they texted me ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. Mm-hmm. The movie's at ten thirty. We got to movie. At I 11. live in Culver City. I live yeah, in no. Culver City. We got there at eleven. You know why? Because there's no movie theater at Downtown Disney anymore. We thought it was out there. Oh, we were running through okay, Downtown well, Disney. Forget, just... about, forget about that. I was under the impression there was a movie theater there. So <laughs> if I if, if we were, we were so new we... in advance, if we knew in advance, oh, there's no movie theater at all, just come anyway, great, then yeah, I probably would have gone. Mm. We're running through Downtown Disney. I'm like, I do not want to miss I'm Guardians like sangri- of the Galaxy. I'm like, too sangria is in my body. Are you, yeah. like wait, are you going to tell me you guys haven't seen we're it yet? We're running. I haven't seen it yet, yeah. Can no. we go watch it tonight? Wait, we did watch Guardian. We, no, we watched it. We, I just we just missed the first like twenty minutes, probably ten. No, we just said there's no movie theater. Yeah, so we, we we ran to the car. Ran to the car and drove to the place the movie theater was at, which yeah. was like maybe less than a mile away. That's but so funny. Even still, we like were booking. We're it. booking it. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, in any case, I, I live in Culver City, and that, that's yeah. that's a minimum forty eight minutes before traffic. And, yeah, and, to and, Anaheim. Right? Yeah, like they yeah. they. they co- 10 o'clock moves yeah. at 10 30 yeah. i'm like i'm in my pjs i'm gonna need a minimum of 15 just to get out of my clothes into the right clothes wash my face and get into my car yeah you could have yeah. still made it 
To be fair, you came back from from. Yeah, I also just had Boston, flown so in is. from from across the country. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. moral of that story is there's a club in Anaheim that um, people yeah. could also go to if you live in Orange County. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the moral of the story. Yeah. After yeah. we just said how easily we got into like yeah. all these. Things. Oh, then we also had our own. We had our own table for like a couple of seconds because it was like a blocked off table. No, what happened mm. was she <laughs> got on top of the table, and then that bartender that was really nice to us and recognized us was like looking over at me. He's like, No, 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 no. Get, down, get down, get down, get down. And the I'm like, Yeah. Right we're loving it. Security was uh, loving it. Okay. What a typical bridge. This was a weekend, yeah? This was, this was, this, this was like the other day. It was a, this was like yesterday. Like, yeah. Okay. Sunday? Wait. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we may have to go to that club again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real. Sounds Booker. like a club. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you, should, you should play. <laughs> yeah, why not? We'll go down Let's there and have some fun, yeah. Well, uh, speaking of playing and uh, uh doing shows and whatnot i mean obviously mm-hmm. play at one of our shows but do you want to play some <laughs> of uh, your music mm-hmm. right now some of your yeah. new stuff maybe let's run it let's yeah. run it all right first off though uh yeah give us a little intro what what um do you have a name for the song yet or? okay let's see or is it a single is it an album ep i'll play um, what's coming out what's okay so i do have an album coming out uh, my first Ooh. my it's my debut album um, oh your debut album, debut album. whoa debut. Yeah. that's Would, huge yeah Oh yeah, I've done I've done like so many EPs and stuff. So um, yeah, an album I, is basically that's the next move, you know. Nice. So yeah, so a, I'll play some songs. For a, you. a rave dad joke is coming out of me right now. I'm trying say to it, say it. Is, is it bronze era or silver era <laughs> or your gold era? <laughs> it's the platinum era. You know? mm, hell yeah. Yeah. Because Roman silver. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he had to explain it to you. <laughs> Oh, no, I, the, you have to explain your joke. It's not funny. No, that's the thing. That, that's the thing. It is funny. I just like to explain no, jokes because it's funny to me to explain jokes. <laughs> that's like fair. that's one of my favorite things is to explain a joke before you start laughing because yeah. it's just I want to ruin the joke. Yeah. Changes his name every time it's in there. Hey, Roman if I have gold a song go platinum, platinum, platinum though. It's gonna be Roman Platinum. Hell right? yeah, yeah <laughs> boy. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So this one, yeah, this is off the album. I cut okay. it. What's it called? It's called Waiting. Got it. I love vocals. Ooh. The horns. The horns. Yeah. What is that? Is that a horn? It's a diva. It's a synth. Got it. Vibe as always. So that one's fun. That, yeah, I, I, I think that like all, all your music can be like very easily classified into like driving music. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Which yeah. Is I get like, like a trance vibe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, yeah. yeah. It has like a housey trance, yeah. like um, progressive. Yeah, progressive vibe house to kind it. of trancey. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That one's called waiting. That one's that fun. That was awesome. This one is called return of love. This one Ooh. is like. Um, more like funky kind of hell yeah. yeah who were the vocals on that um track um so the vocals uh 
Actually, I don't know. The spice? spice. No, it's not spice. It's not spice. <laughs> it's not dirty so. I, I forgot. I forgot her name. But um, but do you know who Duskus is? Yes. Duskus. Yeah, yeah. So, I love yeah. Duskus. So um, we we were writing a song together, and then like um, and then the the song it's like really old now, but yeah. um, he kind of was like, oh, you could just use the song because I'm not going to use it, and I was like, okay. Oh. So I. I took the vocal and then just used the vocal and then made my, made the entire song around it. Oh, sick. Wow. And I love so that. it's his friend, I believe. Yeah. That's so funny. Mm -hmm. are, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yeah. yeah. Black? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to, I want to point this out to the people who are watching mm -hmm. because people always bitch and whine about, oh yeah, like ghostwriting this or ghostwriting that, or it's not really your song. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. A musician yeah. can create a whole ass song and be mm -hmm. like, you know what? I just don't want to use it anymore. Yeah. It's just, it's not my vibe. It's not me. Yeah. Give it yeah. to somebody else. For and sure. another person, another artist can create a, an amazing song. William Black yeah. being uh, back to you. Back to you. Yeah, was it was a original song. Yeah. Was it Millennium or Slender? Yeah, it was Millennium. Millennium's uh, song originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, William was like, I love this. I love this. Yeah. The entire yeah. time. Then finally, when uh, Nick gave it up, William was like, Can I, can I, have can it? I use it? Yeah. yeah. Can I have it? <laughs> and it yeah. turned out to be one of his biggest songs. Yeah. yeah. And him and Slender and whoever sure. else was on that was one of the biggest songs they've ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, I mean, that's, you know, a lot of the music industry is like that, you know, and like, I would never like just take a, a full song and just release it. But, um, like this one, it was just the vocal. I made the yeah. entire instrumental around yeah. it. Yeah. So, but, um, you know, I've definitely like, I've had a, a lot of songs that I've worked on with other people and then, um, maybe they're like, Oh, I don't like the direction, but I'm like, I like the direction. So, um, they're like, okay, well let's just work it out. And we just figure out the, uh, the splits on the back end, and then, right. um, you know, they're credited properly. So that's just how, you know, I've done a lot of that with other mm -hmm. people. I've ghost written songs. I've done some, some work f I've, you know, given people songs before. That's just how it goes. I know? love that. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I honestly, I really do love that piece of information you've given mm -hmm. us. Cause yeah, uh, I, I think a lot of consumers like ourselves who listen to music just they, they they don't know that they yeah, don't yeah. They, they're like oh yeah the artist made everything no there's a team there's oh, so yeah. many yeah. things that go on lots there's of writers give and yeah. take yeah. like hey this sounds great let's go in this direction oh you don't want to cool yeah. i'm gonna go with this direction let's exactly. would you help me get to this point mm -hmm. yeah our friend um uh, i don't know if you know who baby z's is he's a hard style artist uh, he goes okay. by dionysus okay. and uh he was telling us that um uh like some of our favorite artists like i'll have ghosts like res res's team like mm. has ghost writers like who basically start start a project yeah. and then she'll go in and she'll add like little touches and yeah. it's like it's so common you know like even with um uh like zed's uh songs that he's got like middle yeah was written pretty much mostly by gray yeah and mm -hmm. and so they're still on the track obviously but but zed added his name to it but like from what i'm hearing uh and this could be wrong but like from what i'm hearing um as, and particularly from gray uh all you know all he did was he came in and just added his like sprinkles onto yeah. it yeah. right and yeah. then released the song on like and it you has his name attached to it so it blew up yeah. right and look where it got them same thing with the, his song with bose yeah you know? mm -hmm. so and yeah. I, honestly I, i'm still a firm believer of like that's not a bad thing yeah you know mm -hmm. at the end of the day sometimes music just needs to be created and his meeting yeah. needs to be put out there and yeah. off of what he was saying about res not just res but i'm sure there's a lot of artists they perform so goddamn much where yeah. do they find the time to actually make this music yeah, yeah. Now, they've already created their signature they've cr yep. already created everything that they need to to have that brand mm -hmm. now they have a whole ass team to help them create for sure and i don't yeah. think i don't think there's anything wrong with that yeah no and like i would love to like continue like ghost right or maybe not even ghosting i would just do like i would love to be credited and like just you know make some instrumentals and like yeah. and see some bigger artists pick it up and like be part of their project like there's nothing wrong with that like you know i mean there's a like lot Beyonce. of money involved in that for sure there's a, a shit ton of money involved yeah. you know and mm -hmm. so you know it, that's something i want to do in the future is just like you know make a lot of songs for other people because like yeah. i make such a variety as it is you know i could probably like shit if zed was like hey man you want to help me work on something i would just be like all right i'll yeah. whip up some progressive house yeah, like sample yeah. packs yeah well that that's, too for yeah. sure yeah sample packs yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. super interesting though because like not to deviate too much because i do want to hear the other song yeah, but like no uh you know we we were talking for a while about the whole um beyonce like winning best edm um uh, album at the oscars right yeah. and so at first obviously a lot of us are like well you know that's not fair like uh, odessa deserved it or rufus du soul deserved diplo you know yeah. but like it's it's interesting to hear that that perspective like yeah. from you where it's like you know like a lot of these artists are just happy to like yeah they're happy that like these big artists that they probably look up to yeah are honestly. like using their like tracks so they yeah. at the end of the day they don't really 
care about like getting all the attention they're just happy to like to like be involved with yeah. the track yeah. you know yeah. and so it's not about it's not about the title it's about like just having that experience and i mm -hmm. think that's a pretty like beautiful perspective yeah for sure yeah i mean it's also like sometimes you just want your music to be heard yeah, yeah like yeah like beyond yeah. like let's use beyonce as an example <laughs> She throws that song out there that uh, was involved with Green Velvet or Diplo or whoever else Honey was Love. on it. Honey Love, mm -hmm. exactly. If Beyonce wasn't involved, I guarantee you at least half the people who listened to it did, wouldn't have listened to it. Yeah. If Beyonce's yeah. name for sure brought brought attention to all those people. Oh, most yeah. definitely. Oh, most yeah. definitely. And then how, how many of those people might have become fans of Green Velvet, of like Honey Love, of yeah. like all those people now? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like being able to have that under your belt too, just being like, oh, you know, I produce for this person, I produce for that person. Like that's yeah. huge, you know? Yeah. And like posting about that too, like it's just like, yo, like I produce for Beyonce or I produce for this. Like people are, uh, people are taking notice for sure, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. In, the, in, in the end, it all comes around to you i think mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent. yeah exactly yeah that's that yeah. all right next one so this um, next one is what was it called again return of love this okay. is like some like kind of like funky yeah that's right yeah yeah already oh, 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 like it. <laughs> your face that the funk hit me in the face so hard <laughs> The guitar and the bass add so much. Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> Was this under a slideshow? Uh, yeah. I think okay, yeah. 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 You know, this song sounds so maddy on. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that guitar, electric guitar. Yep. I don't, I don't know what that hi hat is, but it's like a sweeping hi hat. Yeah. I'm like in love with right now. Yeah, I like how you bring up Maddie on because, like, for sure, that's like a big influence, you know. And yeah, Maddie on is like someone I, I would want to like tour with. You know? Yeah, hell yeah, we yeah. just saw him at Project Love. I, I was about to say yeah. he oh, destroyed really? yeah, yeah, every yeah. time. Every time I've seen him, he's yeah. yeah. But he, yeah, he took insane. it to a new level at Project Glow. Yeah, he took it to a new level. He destroyed. was it his live show or was it his? Uh, he's live. It was, or was it, was his it? a DJ set? He did? Um. I think it was a live set. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. he played uh, he played his Good Faith album. Okay, and then, yeah. Um, he ended with Earth, Wind & Fire, which I'm pretty sure is his show. Yeah. 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 Because he's been, he's been playing my song for his DJ sets every time. Oh, really? Like, yeah, and I'm like, yo, like every single every single time he plays a DJ set, I, I'm seeing people tag me like, yo. And Wait, which like song? Uh, he plays Fool, like the original. Oh. And then actually he's been playing the VIP now. He's been playing Fool 2022, so... Uh. Has yeah. he reached out to you or you, you reach out to him? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I send him a bunch of music. I, I met him um, at a brownie show here. So, um, nice. yeah. Um, you know, Maddie on, this man wants to go on tour with you. Hey, <laughs> Maddie on. People call him Maddie on right now. Come yeah. come 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 I feel like it just fits. You yeah. Know? I yeah. feel like it just fits, you know. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, the styles are very similar. You know, I could put on a good show for, you know, I'll be a good opener, you know. Yeah. Just, hey, Maddie on. Let's do it. Hell yeah. And then Odessa played, uh, yeah. was it Cloud9 High? They played No, it. they played uh, my song with Bikla. It's called um, Never Be Mine. Oh, got yeah. it. Okay, and yeah. So yeah, that was dope. That was dope. Odessa yeah. is, is sick. That was know? at the Do Lab in, at Coachella, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's very rare, very rare that people will play my music. Just because like a lot of my music is not like very DJ friendly. So yeah. it, it's very rare. But it's cool when I see when I see big big artists play it you know yeah. So, yeah i was i was about to ask like how must it feel yeah it's cool it's cool you know yeah yeah I, like i said you know it's a lot of my music's not very dj friendly so like i don't see it a lot but um yeah it's dope so I think going forward, I want to make more uh, music that's easy to like transition into. Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so that's funny fair. how that is a factor though. That is, yeah. No, that is, that mm -hmm. is. For I, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's just how it goes, you know? Yeah. But I don't know. I think um, that was, uh, th that's actually a question I had for you too, which, which is mm -hmm. like when you're crafting your set, 
like what are some of the factors that go into like making the decisions of like you know what songs go where obviously like keeping mm -hmm. the same tempo and um yeah. switching up genres those are like very you know prominent yeah. factors of a set but i would say like yeah my sets have been very difficult over the years to kind of like kind of like um you know just make sure it's it's like narrowed down and yeah it's just it's been a process like for sure over yeah. the years it's it's taken me a lot of time to kind of like make it flow well yeah you know but i've got it down i think like after playing so many shows especially like last year i played a, so many shows like i really kind of got it down it goes nice. it flows well and i can go from you know because like i there's a part of me that's like, man, I wish I just made house music. I, I could just play. I could yeah. just play house music. I wouldn't even have to like put a set together. I would yeah. just go up there and play. Yeah, I don't, you know. So, but you know, being being me, I I, I have to like f make it really like flow together. Yeah. So yeah. Would you say that's the challenge of making like mu music For that's sure. kind of all over the place? One hundred percent. But and also once you have enough music, you know, it's it makes it a little bit easier. You know. Yeah. So, and I don't just play my own music. I play like, I, I really just play music I like, yeah. you know? And someone said Good. that I played a show in Kansas city two weeks ago and he was just like, man, you just play like, you could just tell you just play the music you, you like. And that's, yeah. it's so sick, you know? And yeah. that, I really felt that, you know? So, yeah. Cause it's true. You know, I just play music. I like to hear, play my own music and then mix it with shit that I'm digging. Yeah. It's like it's like a uh, Skrillex when we mm -hmm. like I've seen Skrillex like lately, yeah. you know. That's that's kind of like what they're doing. Yeah. And Forteta and Fred again, they just play what they want to fucking just play. They play what they want. Those yeah. those guys just they make, they yeah. crack me up. I, can't, I I I we talked about this in the last podcast, but I still can't stop thinking about the fact uh, Kieran mm -hmm. just yeah. grabbed his groceries and walked oh, yeah. off. I know, I know, I know. He's got the back. Yeah. Did, did you see that video where he was like talking to Fred? They were like walking up to the stage and like cuz you know they're they're oh, British, yeah, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. He's like Ariana Grande played on that oh, stage. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, she yeah, played yeah. on this uh -huh. on this thing and now we are. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. so funny. <laughs> Dude, th those like you define humble it's those guys yeah, yeah for everyone sure. in the comments are like yo kieran kind of like ariana grande <laughs> so yeah absolute legends for sure it's crazy yeah, they're making big waves um skrillex yeah. played that um five hour set at red rocks for real? Yeah. all by himself you see his speech mm -hmm. yeah. he's he gonna keep going yeah he's gonna keep but going they cut him off no yeah, yeah. yeah. Whenever, he, went and, yeah. he went and played an after party after yeah, yeah of course yeah. he did <laughs> Dude, and honestly, his look, his new look with everything, it just fits. It yeah, it's so oh, for much. Sure. For, sure. for sure. Oh wait, did you guys see? I saw this earlier today. You know the uh, the 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 samples of the girl going. Oh my god! Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he has like a photo with her of today, like yeah, like yeah, years yeah. later. Oh. It was that girl who did the cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cups, yeah. yeah so it's like that's that's cool. She's that's like all so grown up. Yeah, she's yeah, all grown up. Crazy. And that's that's so cool. funny. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god you'll you'll put that on screen you'll find it like it's easy to find it's yeah, like them yeah. taking a picture together years ago when he first sampled her yeah. and today yeah. well because i remember back when back when that song you know obviously got popular mm -hmm. and when we were in high school yeah um i remember like seeing videos on youtube of her like and the she cups. Was, well yeah but then after he made that a song she was like she was like promoting the shit out of it because yeah, she was like yeah. that's me so cool that like yeah. he used my sample or he used a sample of my voice because that's like i feel like that's around the time sampling even like yeah. started to get popular mm -hmm. you know like not a lot of people or not, not that not, not a lot of people were doing it but you didn't hear it yeah. as much you know yeah. sorry side tangent i just think it's funny that so many people get so upset about ghostwriting but they don't blink an eye about sampling it's like the same thing. Sampling is so common. I know, exactly. <laughs> I'm just like, they don't even blink an eye about sampling. What, it's like the same thing to an extent. What is a diff What is the difference? Since you're, you're the producer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sam sampling and what What do you mean? like Sampling and ghostwriting. Oh, well, yeah. ghostwriting, like, if, if, like, you make a song, you know, it's like, a, that would be like a, you know, like a full piece of you know like a full song you know right, and, yeah. and then someone like takes it as their own you know okay and then they're not credited you know it's just kind of like they get paid out and and then the other artist has their name on it you know right that's so, ghostwriting yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah but i can see why people would be upset about that because it's just like you didn't actually make that song yeah it's yeah. like the concept behind yeah it, i think yeah, yeah, yeah it comes down to even like the stuff we do just getting credited that's what's yeah important. i think well yeah i mean you could you could ghost you know the the ghosting thing is kind of frowned upon i feel like because yeah like you might as well just be like hey like i'm gonna credit this person and um you know their their name is in the credits and then even if it is just them slapping their name on it, like at least someone gets credited. But yeah, some people are cool just with getting paid out. 
Yeah. Also, yeah. if if you are, if they do credit someone, it looks more like it looks more like it was a collaborative work. Yeah. Than than just someone, you know, if you find out that the the song was ghost produced, you know. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's that's the way I see it. Um, but yeah, I mean. I don't know. And then sampling is sampling. Well, sampling is just like you know. I mean, think of I like Subtronics. Like all a lot of his songs, he uses a bunch of samples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sampling you could just like take. I mean, take any sample, or like you can take a you can take like um, you know a song that's like got a really catchy hook, and then take that piece and then like chop it up, or like use it in your own song. There's nothing wrong with that. I right. mean, but but a lot of times the sample won't get cleared, you know. So like. Oh yeah! If you what use do you mean it, it won't get cleared? So like, if you release it on like Spotify, like a lot of times, some people will just drop it anyways, and no one will find it. But oh. uh, like, if you take like a like a if you take like a hook from like a big song and you like pitch it down, you still have to like get it cleared. You know, it's oh. like a big you know. So yeah, yeah, you have to get that cleared, and sometimes it's a lot of money, or sometimes it's not very much money. And got it. Um, but sometimes it makes the song. You know, sometimes yeah. it's yeah. like. I need that sample in the song because that's what makes the song what it is, you know? Yeah. I think that's why the, the SoundCloud era kind of like had a, a change because once upon a time, mashup, sampling, everything on there was pretty much allowed. Yeah. And then there came a point where like everything was getting removed and right. it wasn't like, oh, we're just going to remove the song. No, we're banning your account because you're stealing. Yeah. So right. like I know a lot of artists and I, I, I know San Holo is one of them. Mm -hmm. He was like, it's not worth losing everything, so I'm just gonna delete everything I have and just yeah. remove it all, which uh, probably hurt him deeply. Yeah. yeah. But it's like I'd rather not lose my access. Yeah. yeah. So it's like writing it's like writing an essay. So like sampling would be like you're you're taking information from like maybe another website and using it, but you're changing it up into like your own words, so like your own version of that. Would would you say that's kind of how sampling is? Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, like imagine like so if I'm in Ableton, you know, I just drag in like another song, someone else's song, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna like I really like this phrase here. I'm gonna use that, uh, and then um, you know, I'm gonna use that, and maybe like you. I guess it's like you don't have to like do anything to it. It's still considered sampling, whether oh, it, whether you change it a it's lot or not. It's just you using it. Yeah. Just you using it. Got yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Like I, I'm, I have a song right now that has like a sample of, um, that it's that Kanye and uh, the game song. Um, you know, it, it's like a very popular. It's got that sa that sample of that that woman's voice, and it's very popular. I've heard it in other songs. Okay, but I'm like. I wonder if I have to get that cleared or not. You know? Yeah. But it does make the song, you know, so yeah. I'm going to have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Ah, mm -hmm. that's like a whole, all these yeah. other things. Here but but maybe about. he sampled it from, from the original song. Cause the original song I think was from like the seventies ah, or something. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, so like uh, best example, the first example that comes to my head is, um, you listen to toy boy at all? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he must have got that cleared. I think be, I think he got it cleared because that's why it took so long to get it on Spotify because it it wasn't on Spotify. It was just on SoundCloud right. for many years. Right, right, right. So yeah, maybe ah, that could have been that could have been why. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, or so, like oh, sorry, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, no, it, it was going to be. A, it was going to change the topic. Uh, so two very different things like mm -hmm. sampling and ghostwriting two very different things mm -hmm. but uh my thought process was just like the idea of like you know taking something from somebody else mm -hmm. it's just it's funny to me that some people get really really upset when all i'm trying to say is like all music is collaborative yeah. yes all music is collaborative for sure yeah. yeah now don't get me wrong people absolutely should be credited for sure yeah for sure but mm -hmm. all music is collaborative <laughs> Hundred percent. Yeah. So I, I was gonna comment on that because it's really interesting. I've been really into uh or <laughs> so my friend, um our friend Edric, who uh we were with in oh, DC the K pop group showed me uh XG. XG. Have you heard of XG before? XG? Yeah, so I don't know if you're uh, familiar with with any K-pop groups. I I personally am not, so I, yeah. I I don't really like. I mean, the only ones I know are like BTS, Blackpink, right, right. like the main ones, you know. Yeah. But right. XG apparently is this like group of I think it's like seven girls. They're all super young, and 
and um, they did like five months ago. They did a um, they did two cipher videos, and that, those were like their intro videos. Mm. And like with the way that K-pop groups work is, you know, they um, they like train and condition these girls for years and years up to the point where they form the group, and then they like do right. all the pull. So everything's like pretty planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, the whoever does their marketing brilliant right because brilliant. so what they did was they did these ciphers um they did the first one was just two of the girls and then the second one which is the one that kind of like went super viral recently mm -hmm. is four of the girls and the first girl that is rapping on all of them rap to uh to um beats that already exist like they're they're mm -hmm. i guess you could call them samples okay. um they're already beats that exist yeah, in that's what a cipher is yeah, yeah. And, J I D right. like and english japanese korean all at the same time rapping oh. in all three what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not like they mm -hmm. rap only in English. Within the same no, flow. in the same flow, they're switching I from English to play Korean to Japanese. So bad. No, but I don't. Get it. No, 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 we will, no. That'll get copyright. Really? Uh, Hundred. But there's reaction videos to uh, oh. to it though. Yeah, but YouTube is different. Oh wait, this is going this on YouTube. This is going on YouTube, but also no, this is going on YouTube. But also I don't know. I don't know. There's just is there a cipher on Spotify? No. Uh. I don't know. I just I have a feeling. I have we can feeling. always show you at, at uh, when we go eat. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it would be like our live reaction to it. <laughs> it would be, yeah, I will say, but it's good. unbelievably Easy. talented. Yeah, these girls are unbelievable. And keep in mind, he showed me this the other day after picking me up for the airport. I'm falling asleep, but I'm like, you're listening. Like, I think that clip. It. I think that clip would do huh? really well on, on socials, on TikTok and Instagram. I'm gonna. You know what? I, I I'm gonna try and play it. And if worse comes to worse, yeah. I can just. Cut you just. That. You could just yeah. clip if this there's for a cut here, clip. then it, that's probably. I why. think you should clip it for a social clip of getting our like live reaction to this. Because, Actually, yeah, because right. on Instagram and on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot, no one's gonna stop it. I get no reception yeah. here, but let's see. Hopefully, it it works. Jay, this is what I was trying to show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, th these girls are actually very, very talented. Mm -hmm. I might and need to. We might need to use your phone. I, uh, or I honestly want to look more better. into them because I, mm -hmm. I do. Because I, I have a, I, I know a lot of people who are very into the K-pop industry, and you know how toxic it can Brain be. Yeah. So I wonder if like, was there like fifty girls, and these are the remaining seven? <laughs> they narrowed it down exactly because a lot That's of them crazy. they because the, the amount of physical and mental yeah. and like Rapper everything uh, they go through is, it's to the yeah. degree of an athlete, but for. For performing sure. in yeah. music they're like yeah they're training them to be superstars right? yeah 100 percent. exactly 100 yeah. yeah. and 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 it's working and it's like nothing less <laughs> yeah like yeah. like unless you're a superstar you're not part of this team wasn't so black pink was like the same thing right it was i believe like, so yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> to my understanding and please correct me if i'm wrong because i only know so much about the k-pop industry every big k-pop group you know of Mm -hmm. they're all catered it wasn't like a group of people who decided hey let's do this together yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. they were Show all the brought video. together they were all trained for yeah. years because let's be honest here no normal person can sing dance rap and do all they do <laughs> yeah. in that two minute time span yeah. like you got to have a, a certain level of stamina and, and, sure. and like, hardcore training that's what it, it is hardcore yeah. training and and their bodies look like that come on yeah i know yeah oh yeah because they're all like really good dancers mm, also yeah. like yeah. Ex very insanely petite. good mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's insane. insane okay so this is the cypher it's a little terrifying to yeah. be honest i'm hoping that, how hard they train because imagine what they've had to go through yeah just to get to that point i'm hoping we can play but this like these girls really but, want it though like that's why they play they, they yeah. allow themselves I mean, I feel to like, get put through I, it um it's just very <laughs> interesting how these uh, people in other countries because because i know thailand Thailand to get out of poverty, you have two choices. Truly to get out of poverty, two choices. You either go Muay Thai, and obviously mm -hmm. we know how dangerous that can be, mm -hmm. or you go the um, television route of uh, being uh, trans, mm -hmm. um, or being a cross-dresser or whatever. That's why the, the right. it's like, it's it's uh, entertainment. Yeah. It's like big entertainment over there. Mm -hmm. Those are the two easiest ways to get out of poverty. Okay. So I wonder if it could be like that with K-pop groups. You know, like in Korea, like, you know going in that this is going to destroy your body and mind to an extent. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are people who are like, I love this. Same thing with like Muay Thai. There's kids who are like, I this is my dream. This is my everything. Yeah. But I do wonder in the K-pop industry, are there people who are like, I just need to do this to get to not get myself out of poverty, but to get everybody in my family and what, or the family. parents like force yes. them into it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm. I wonder that would be a really interesting documentary because yeah, you could do research on it. Yeah, I kind of want to. I mean, you, he, Devin said that they did a uh, a documentary. There, there's uh, they haven't done it yet. It's coming out, but oh, I watched an interview. I watched an mm -hmm. interview with them where they said that they documented um, everything, all their training, everything yeah. up to the point where they released their I debut. Think, as I think that's going to be a very, very controversial thing because I know so many people who have tried to be yeah. in this industry and people who were in this industry. 
I have yet to hear positive things. They're all just like, no, if you get to the superstar, mm-hmm. your life is set. Do you think it would be controversial? I feel like they, they, they sound, club. yeah, they sound very confident about it though. Like they controversial sound like, to us, maybe not to Koreans and maybe not to whatever's over there, but to us to see the, because I, I feel like, this is my opinion here, I feel like what we end up seeing, we will see as that as abuse. Well, then like if you, if you if they really want it and if you want something you're gonna go after it you know and like yeah. that's the Depend, only way to get it they're depend, gonna do it but what if, if they don't see it as that yeah. i mean no th- that's the thing like it'll be controversial that's any controversial thing is based on one person feeling a type of way about it and another well, person everything is controversial everything is controversial everything is controversial firsthand we're, we're, we're <laughs> literally <laughs> split like government we're, we're literally fucking split from the very beginning yeah. so like so anything I, is gonna be controversial what i'm trying to say is like It'll be interesting to see the response that gets That's because true, yeah. let's be real here. Like it does like, yeah, even if they want it, no one should be abused to get to yeah, where they want yeah. to get. But we don't, we also don't know if they're like, if they're like abused. actually getting abused, yeah. you know? Oh like, no, no, they're not being physically like hurt or anything. But like to get yelled at, like when I was on a cheer team, they would fucking yell at me. Like yes. you need to, uh, you, 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 you messed up. You got to run 10 laps. You messed up. You got to do this. Dude, yeah. You got like, that's well, the name of the football? game. Well, hell we can football. Not hell we can football. But like specifically dude. in performing, if you have messed up once, you got to, you got to like. That's, that's fine. But from what I hear, they're not even fed food. That's not okay. I don't. I, I like I don't the basic to components of life. I would get told if we don't hit the routine of perfect, we're not going to get our lunch. I, I I personally see that as abuse. I think it's just performance. You know, like nah. Per- that's, that, how, that's how you this train. This is my personal opinion. Like like I I food, shelter, and clothing. Those are the three things no one should ever go without. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Different different backgrounds. You know, I I'm mine's pretty kind of the same thing with sports teams. They're kind of similar. Sure, but like you yeah. should still be fed. Yeah, but, but if you do it right, if you do your what, if you do what you're what you want to do right, then you could get fed. And half the time they're just bluffing. Yeah. Also, half the time they're just it's they're just, just saying. Oh, yeah, like, no, tell if, they're, if they're bluffing, yeah, absolutely. But unfortunately, to my understanding, again, this is my understanding of what I've been told. They're not bluffing. I find it hard to believe that they would actually, but I, I'm I'm interested well, to well, see. That's, we'll that's see why, the documentary. That, well, from what I understand, that's why, like, like what I was just telling you, there mm-hmm. could be a group of fifty girls all in the same program to be yeah. a part of what are they called? XG. Actually, let's just, XG. this is imaginary. Like maybe there's 50 girls all XG. Only seven made it because the rest got kicked. But also they're all yeah. fighting for the same thing, you yeah. know? So they're going to do whatever it yeah, takes. Yeah, they know that it's, and, oh, and no, they, they probably sign up. It's like Blue Lock. Yeah, I know that's an anime, but like it's different. But <laughs> yeah, no, but it's absolutely. like they all know that like they're in it to like. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't know if you watch any anime, but <laughs> I've watched a couple. Oh, okay, nice. but I, I don't. I'm not too familiar with anime. Oh, it's, a, yeah. it's a soccer Death anime. Note. I've watched it. No. Oh, nice. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey guys, editor Devin here, and uh, yeah, YouTube did not allow me to attach the XG Cipher video to the episode without getting copyrighted. So if you want to go check out our full reaction to that, you can go and view it over on the Patreon, which you can find the link to in the description. If you want to go check out the cipher for yourself though, just look up XG Gals Cipher on YouTube and it should be the first option that pops up. I highly, highly recommend watching it. It's really good. Okay, that's all. Back to the episode. Gotta gotta start producing for these people. I yeah. Don't know. Like I, I gotta find an end. <laughs> I gotta find someone who's like, yo, you wanna be a the, a sole producer for this K-pop group, like why not? Yeah, Getting their DMs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the beats. I mean, on those songs that I showed you or you guys, um, the the ones that we were listening to, uh, the ones that are like their most popular right now, they sound like. I mean, they're very like hip hop centric, but like mm. they got like a little tinge of like could yeah. be like electronic. very EDM pop. Yeah, yeah, EDM pop. Like it could be mm-hmm. a little bit, especially like mm. left right. It yeah. could be like EDM pop. I mean, but I got to do whatever beat. they want me. If they yeah, want you can. Yeah, yeah, you're versatile. <laughs> if they so. want to make me. So, if if they want me to make some hip hop stuff, I'll make just straight hip hop, you know, whatever yeah. they want. Yeah. That'd be super interesting to see is like K K pop. No, EDM K pop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like Blackpink is kind of like EDM. <laughs> yeah. It's very EDM. Yeah. Pop, you know? Yeah. KDM, yeah. electronic KDM. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Dabin did a remix to Shooting Star um, at his show, which is at oh, XG. Yeah. So I'm not even surprised. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's Korean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But maybe maybe you Definitely. do like a remix, and then like then they'll see. I mean, I have I I don't know 100 percent how all that works. I know we were talking to Bonnie and Clyde in the last episode a little bit about how they like reach out to have people yeah. remix their music, mm-hmm. um, and it's like a you know you know their people, they know your yeah. people, and you get a hold of like the vocals and everything. Yeah, but um, is that how that would work if you wanted? I mean, to? well, that's how I got connected with a bunch of people. Like I got connected. I don't know if you know Bikla, but I got connected with him and and uh, right Bikla. He, yeah, yeah. He asked me to remix his song and um we became friends through that well, he's from russia so he but he came out here and we, and we became friends right 
Um, also, Mind Chatter. Mind Chatter. Um, that's the one who did Night Goggles, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so like. that's how I got connected with him was because mm. he released that. He did like an album on Zoo's label. Yeah. And then um, they asked me to remix it. And then, uh, yeah, we just kind of became friends there. And yeah, so that's that's kind of how. That's crazy then because that just makes me think the artist that I mentioned earlier, Aaron Heibel, he had done all these remixes to these like big mainstream songs like mm -hmm. Post Malone. He did Sunflower with Post Malone and Sway Lee. He did um, Wolves by Marshmello and Selena Gomez. Mm -hmm. He did uh, like some Sia songs. Um, like all these like big popular songs. So I always wondered like how do they get a hold of these things? And I know sometimes the those artists they'll put out the vocal like mm -hmm. they'll like put out the vocals and stuff, right? Yeah. And like oh like make it open for artists to like yeah. grab the assets. Yeah. But sometimes they also have to contact them too. Yeah, or like the artist will their team will like reach out to people. Usually like so like let's say an artist is under a certain management or like an agency like yeah. if it's post malone and he's under i don't know uta so that's his agent you know maybe they speak with the management team and they're just like do you know anybody any like uh, up and coming producers that would want to remix this yeah. and then they they get like 20 people and they all remix oh. it so that's kind of where it's like you know they're not like it's not a personal thing you know right. but i guess an opportunity is an opportunity like yeah. if i got re if if Post Malone's team reached out to me and it was like, hey, you want to remix this? I may never, ever speak with Post Malone, but I may get the chance to remix this yeah. song. Yeah. You know? I hear so, that happens a lot. Interesting. Yeah, it happens sure. a lot. You never yeah. actually speak to the artist. Yeah. yeah. It's just their team reached out to you. For me, though, like if anybody remixes my song, I, I kind of want to know who, who I want to know them as a person. That's just right. how the way I see it. You know, maybe if, if I get to that level, I could just like have my team, but I, I like to be, I'm pretty particular. I, I like to know the artist and like who, what their sound is like and how they can like elevate my song, you know? Yeah. So that's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you come across any like, um, artists, smaller artists that way who have like remixed your stuff? Um, well, I've had other artists who, uh, who asked me to remix, you know, definitely right. like, Hey, can I remix your song? I've had, there's a bunch of remixes online, but, um, a lot of times like, it's just maybe I don't I don't get the chance to listen to it or yeah. something, you know. Yeah. yeah. But I definitely have some remixes on my album, so that'll oh. be cool. Yeah, and they're, they're producers nice. I like, so yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Vinny, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we're about out of time, but we do have a little spot where, um, like, please tell everyone what you got going on right now. Yeah, Obviously, sure. by now, if you uh, don't, if you haven't already, go check out uh, Roman Silver's work. It's incredible. Well, I appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, and dude. Yeah. Yeah, I got an album this year, a uh, debut album. Super stoked on that. Yeah, I just wrapped up. Um, well, I'm just about to wrap up my my tour. So, uh, yeah, but I'm going to have a lot more shows later in the year over summer as well. And then I think I'm going to do a, a, a bigger headline tour come next spring. So th Hell that'll yeah. be nice. kind of like following up the album. And yeah hitting a lot of the cities I didn't get to hit. So I'm really right. excited on that, you know? Yeah. And w uh, what are the what, the upcoming ones? Like what, what cities? I know you said you have some this weekend. This will be uploaded this weekend. Right. But, well, um, after that, I have Bonnaroo. If you're going to Bonnaroo, come check me out. Um, I have this like kind of boutique festival near Denver called Sonic Bloom. That ooh. should be really fun. And then I think I have a couple more shows that haven't been announced yet. There's there's one in Vegas, I believe, and then there's um, not EDC or anything, but um, it's like this other show with someone else. And then I think I have one in – oh, I do. And then I have two shows with Inzo in Seattle oh. and Portland. So that will be in June nice, next nice. year. So, yeah. Yeah. Next month, yeah. It, I feel like we're so connected with Inzo, but through mutuals. Because like yeah, we've had Fairlane, William Black mm -hmm. on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're literally our roommates with Inzo. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. so funny. <laughs> yeah, Inzo's dope. Everyone's connected. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Hell thank yeah. You. Well, um, yeah, thank you so much again. And thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, please, uh, if you guys haven't already, we do have a Patreon. Um, go check it out. We will have, um, we drop bonus episodes uh, at least a couple a month on there. Um, so if you guys are looking for a way to support us, um, that's probably the best way. Uh, we are going to be changing studios this summer. Um, so we're going to start prepping for that. And we will need all the support that yeah. we can get. And um, 
tune in in two weeks. Um, we're going to be having a special episode and you're not going to want to miss it. Um, but we're not going to say anything about it now. We're just going to let you uh, wait in anticipation. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, but thank you so much. This has been I'm Peaking Podcast, episode 18. Uh, again, I'm your host, Devin. I'm Nan. I'm Bren. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Yes. And thank you again, Vinny. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you. See you later. Mm-hmm. Doodles. Mm-hmm.